All right. Hello, everyone. Good um, morning, I guess, wherever you are. Today, we'll be going over section 1.6 from the textbook. And it's talking mostly about the absolute value function. And first, I think when we were talking about uh, domain and ranges, we looked at the toolkit functions and their domains. But today, we're going to be taking one of those functions, which is the absolute value function. And it's actually a piecewise function. And if you remember what we talked about, a piecewise function is just you take the entire domain and then you break it into pieces. And so on one side or on one half, in this case, one half, on one half of the um, domain, you have X and the other half of the domain you have, um, you have negative X. So the absolute value function is the function that takes any number and gives you a positive value necessarily. Okay, so the first example we're gonna be looking at today is describing all values within a distance of three from the number two. Now this would be pretty straightforward in that we just need to, well, do I want my ruler? Nope. I don't want my ruler. Okay, I'm not finding, I just use my ruler. So we want to first draw a straight line, which is our number line. And that. So draw a number line. And I think I can close the ruler now. Oh. And find, or, well, I don't want to say find, we should just signify the number two. So if I call this two, I call this one, zero. Oh, shoot. I'm doing that in reverse. Okay, so three, four, five, six. And then this goes one, zero, negative one, negative two. Okay, and then negative infinity, infinity. So this is our number line. Again, it's not drawn to scale, but we're trying to find all values that are within a distance of three from two. Now, this is our number two. You want to look to the left, uh, sorry, to the right first, and then to the left, but a distance of three. So one, two, three. One, well, I might just change colors because why not? Okay, we want to go one, two, three. So the values that we are looking for in this case will be all values within here. Right, so another way we can look at it is everyone within this range is in a value, is in a distance of three or within a distance of three from the number two. So those are the values that we're talking about here. Again, you want to look to the left and you want to look to the right. Okay, now let's look at another question. It says students who score within 20 points of 80 will pass a test. So if, for example, in this class, I say, if you score within 20 points of 80, you get an A in this class, how can we write this as a distance of 80 using absolute value notation? Okay, and we, for this one, you don't, it's just interpreting what the English is talking about. Say, for example, well, let X be my score, you know, or my student score. In this case, my student score. So let X be my student score. So what I'm saying is if my student, I want the distance between my student score and 80 to be very much less than 20. But no matter what you get, say for example, a student gets, if for example, X is equal to 79, right? Then I check to see if 79 minus 80, which is negative one, and I put that in absolute value, which is one. Well, one is less than 20. So if a student has 79, this is a pass, okay? So this is a pass because again, one is less than 20. So that's what you want to keep looking at in cases like this. Say for example, a student gets uh, 50, right? 
if we take the absolute value of 50 and 80, this is equal to absolute value of negative 30, that is 30, and that is definitely greater than 20. So this to then fail with like a huge, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a bad fail. Okay, so that's the idea with absolute value. It allows us to construct things within um, a distance of a number. Okay, now let's look at graphing an absolute value function. Naturally, this is what the graph of the uh, generic absolute value function looks like. So again, this is the graph y equals absolute value of x. Now, the first thing I'll be doing here would be looking at a graph and trying to find the equation of the graph, okay? Normally, uh, from, from section 1.5 with Julian, you must have talked about transformation of a function. And so with this, it makes things a whole lot easier. If I take the absolute value function and I try to graph it on my graph, this is what it looks like. So this is the absolute value function. Uh, I can just do a straight line and get my rules to do that, which is like stupidly fancy, but not necessary. But anyways, that's the absolute value function. And then I have to turn that another 45 degrees. That is the absolute value function. So that's the generic y equal to absolute value of x. Uh, I can do that. Okay, now I can take my rule away. But we see that this absolute value function has been transformed from here at origin zero, zero to here. So now this is the new origin of our own function. And now with that, we need to find what this origin is. And of course you can just look at that. The X coordinate is three and the Y coordinate is negative two. So that's the origin of this function. And we also see that it was moved, you know, three units to the left, oh, sorry, to the right, and then two units down. And so because of that, and then we also we do not see any vertical stretching or horizontal stretching or compression. And so the uh, the equation or the, yeah, the equation for this function would go something like, let me come back to my background. So the equation for this would go something like f of x is equal to absolute value of x minus three, right? So absolute value of x minus three, and we want to go, oh, one second, minus two. Okay, so again, we have no stretching or compression, so that would be what the function would look like. Okay, now moving on, let's see how we can solve an absolute value function. Again, let me come back to this. For graphing an absolute value function, you just want to do the same thing. So for graphing, I can just write it up here. For graphing, use values close to D. Uh, so, so this is exactly what I'm trying to say in essence is, so this number right here is telling us that we are looking for values that are a distance of three from x. So you want to start using values that are at the distance. So choose values or use values. Oh, did I just say choose and use again at the same time? So choose values. Choose values that are at a distance or within a distance of three from the uh, distance from, oh, no, no, no. Okay, now I am, I'm, choose values that are close to three. I think that's the, because we're trying to find people that are at a distance of three, so that are close. Three. For the graphing, okay? 
Now let's look at the most important thing, which is solving an absolute value equation. Because sometimes we have, um, we always want to see, you know, what <laughs> we always want to find what x is. And so in this case, um, I brought this uh, how to here. So to solve a, an absolute value equation, we always want to note that you would have two solutions for it. Well, not always. Sometimes you would have no solutions. Sometimes you would have two solutions. Sometimes you have one solution. But you would have a solution that looks like this. It's either A equal B or A equal negative B. And there's some point where A is actually, uh, B and negative B is the same thing. Say for example, zero, okay? So, now let's look at the how-to when you're given an absolute value function. You want to find the horizontal intercept. We all know what this is by now for its graph. Um, that's where the function equals zero. And then now you isolate those absolute value terms. So those terms or those, um, so isolate the absolute value term, this guy. This is your, I think I just write that beautifully. This is your absolute value term that we're talking about here. Okay, then use the equation A for B to write it that and then solve for X. So now let's take this problem. We have two X minus one minus three. Again, we wanna find the horizontal intercept. So that means we wanna equate it to zero. Isolate the absolute value term. So we want this to stand by itself. So that goes two X minus one equal three because we took three to the other side of the equation. And now we want to separate it. So separate it in the term that you either have two X minus one equal three or two X minus one equal negative three. All right, let's solve all of this independently. If I do two X minus one equal three, that goes two X equal four and X is equal to two or I do two X is equal to negative three plus one, negative two. So X is equal to, well, two X is negative two, X is negative one. So these are the values, right? So these are the values for um, the values of X such that F of X is zero, okay? So we can, just highlight those x equal one, oh, sorry, x equal two and x equal negative one. Okay, moving on, we want to look at general absolute value inequality. So what we just looked at was for equations and this is for inequalities and absolute value inequality is always of the form absolute value less than B, absolute value less than or equal to B, absolute value greater than B or absolute value greater than or equal to B. And the expression A is usually the one that depends on the variable X. Now, when we're solving an inequality, we're trying to find all the set of X's that satisfy that inequality. And this is like a, the two different little um, how-tos in the textbook. I just brought them out here for references. If you're solving an inequality of the form X minus A less than B, or less than or equal to B, okay? You, we can do it algebraically, that's like always the, that's the sweetest part. You find the boundary points by solving the equation. So find the point where the e equality happens and then test in those boundaries. So, so if, if for example, I got X equal A and X equal B, I want to separate my domain. Say for example, my domain is the real numbers. I want to separate it to X less than A, X, between A and B and X outside B. Okay, so I wanna separate, I wanna test the intervals created by the boundary points. So that's what this is talking about here. And then write your interval as a union because sometimes you might have a union of intervals that satisfy the inequality or sometimes you can just have it as one interval. Okay, now I have examples, like a lot of them and let's take the first one. Again, I want my, my roulette to just give me a demarcation between my work here. Uh, nice. Okay. Uh, you need to work. Okay. So 
the first way I'll be solving this would be doing what we did here. So first find the boundary point. So I'm gonna be following these instructions. So the first one says find the boundary point by solving X minus A equal B. Well, that is absolute value of X plus two equals six. And this is, we know you do X plus two equals six or X plus two equal negative six. And here X is equal to four or X is equal to negative six, negative two is negative eight. Okay, so now we've found those boundary values. Test the interval created by the boundary values to determine where that happens. So now we got the two of them. Now it's either, well, negative eight is less than negative four. So it's either X, okay, so X less than negative eight or negative, oh shoot, yeah negative eight or negative eight again, <laughs> less than X, less than four or X greater than four, right? Now I'm gonna move this ors from here and probably, I don't know, shift this. Okay, I'm gonna shift this a bit and then put the or here, okay? Now, I'm gonna pick a value here and see if it satisfies this equation, okay? So if I pick a value here, say, I'm gonna change pens here. Okay. Say X equal negative nine, okay? Well, negative nine plus two. Okay, I think I need much more bigger space. I will, Take this out of the way and then do it later. Okay. So, so I still need this. I'm testing. So I'm following step two now, test intervals created by boundary. So here I'm going to choose X equal negative nine. Well, negative nine plus two is equal to negative seven, which is seven, which is not less than six. So this is bad. It's not what we're looking for. Let me take um, X, so negative, and I almost made the mistake I made. So I'm trying to check for this. Let me pick say X equals zero, because zero is in there. Well, zero plus two is equal to two which is less than six, so this is good. Next, let's check the last one, x greater than four. If I put, say, x equal five, well, five plus two is equal to seven, which is not less than six. So in this case, this is the only interval that works, and so, we want to bring everything back together by writing it in interval um, or unions of interval. Well, in this case, we only have one interval. So final answer, okay. Again, do not forget that it's a less than or equal to. So these two values will be included, okay? So the answer now would be negative eight. Yes, I think. In the history of people who make that mistake, I'm probably the most. Okay, so this would be what our final answer would be for the solution. So now this is the first way. This is the first way by, you know, putting all of this together, testing. But yeah, you can solve this algebraically and in a much more faster way. Um, I don't know why, uh, delete, go away, go away. Okay, now let's solve this the second way. So second way, way two, which is algebraic. Two. All right. So now let's bring back the function, uh, the the, func uh, the question again. So x plus two less than or equal to six. Now remember how 
this is a less than or equal to first of all. That's the way, that's why we can do this this way. And essentially you want to, so if you have this, uh, I think I put it somewhere here. Oh, I probably didn't put that there, but um, I will show that in a minute. I can just put it as, as an extra when I'm done writing everything. But again, it's also everything is always in your textbook. So if you're having something less than B, oh, I can just write it here. So if you have absolute value of something, well, let's write it in a much more, if you're having say X minus A less than B or less than or equal to B, anyone. So this is minus B, X minus A. So this is what it looks like in um, interval notation or in inequality notation, however you want to call that. So now to solve this problem, we just go negative six, less than or equal to X plus two, less than or equal to six. Because again, an absolute value is bounded by negative values and positive values. So next we want to, because again, what are we looking for? We are solving for X. That's always what we, it's a solve problem. So I want X to be by itself right here. And so what you want to do is you take this guy who is right next to X, I think just put that in a different color. And you wanted to take it away so that X is standing by itself. And so what you can do is you can subtract two from both sides. So I can just write that, subtract two from everyone. And so this is what it looks like. You get negative six, negative two, less than X plus two, negative two less than six, negative two. And so on this side, you have negative eight. On this side, now you have X standing by itself. And on now on this side, you have four. And you see this was a so much more faster than having to like, oh, find the boundary points. And then, so again, you can do those in the two different ways. And also if you're attempting the homework problems, you can do them in either ways. You still get full credit for that unless I state it otherwise that, you know, use this or use that. Okay, and now that is the end of this problem. So from here on out, I would not really be doing too much. It would be more algebraic solutions than anything else. So now let's try to solve this problem. It says you have negative two absolute value of K minus six plus six less than zero. We're trying to find K. And so in this case, again, the first step is isolate the absolute value term. We want this to be by itself. So take everybody else away. And to do that, so solution, negative two K minus six plus six less than zero, or equal to zero. Again, be careful with your less than or equal to, um, sorry, less than or less than or equal to. Because sometimes when you forget it from the start, it can just keep um, messing everything up until your final answer. So we want to take six away first. So we go negative two K minus six less than negative six. Uh, you want to divide. So uh, this was me subtracting. Now I want to divide by negative two, but you have to be very careful here because a division by a negative number. So I can just do a note, note. Dividing by a negative number reverses the inequality. So if I say divide by negative two, then I go K minus six. This has to change to a greater than or equal to. So this is very, very, very important, okay? It has to change to so negative six divided by negative two. It has to change to a greater than or equal to so that this cancellation happens, this go away, this gives you three. And so I get K minus six greater than or equal to three. 
Now on the way back here, it will bring me back to the second. So say like here, so I, I, let, me, let me cover that to look more beautiful. So this was very, very important, right? The next one would be equally as important. And so that would be, I can just write that in. If you have X minus A greater than or equal to B, then your solution would be X minus A less than negative B and X minus A greater than B. Okay, so this is, uh, let me see, can I uh, ink to shape? So, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm not trying to figure this out now, but yeah, that is also equally as important. Okay. So now that we're here at, at this point, that just tells us that you have K minus six less than negative three or K minus six bigger than three. And so this solves as K uh, less than negative three plus six or K greater than three plus six. And this is K, well, I don't know why I'm writing that stupidly, but K less than three or K bigger than nine. And of course, if you want to write this in, in so this is in inequality notation, to write that in interval notation would be, so interval notation. Uh, let me just change from here. So in interval notation, well, let's do this. So an in interval notation, you get, so K less than three is negative infinity to three. Union K bigger than nine is nine to infinity. But I made a very stupid mistake here by forgetting. See how I said, if you forget, if you forget this, guys, everything dials from there. You see, everything I've done so far is very wrong. Like even here when I did this, I forgot my disguise. But again, it works for less than or equal to or greater than or equal to two. So here now, this, 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 this so that my final answer is not a parenthesis, it's a square braces. So it's a square braces. And again, that mistake was very intentional so that you can see that when you're solving a problem and you forget your equal to sign, everything else just stumbles up from there, okay? And the last problem we're going to be solving today is something with like a little fraction. Okay. So again, use the same idea. But in this case, this is uh this is a greater than or equal to. So remember you you just it's either three over four x minus five. Uh sorry, now I can remove the parentheses. Oh sorry, the absolute value. It's either that less than negative seven or three over four X minus five greater than or equal to seven. Okay, now let's solve this equation. You want X by itself, so negative seven plus five. Uh, 3 over 4x. You see, I did it again. Forgot. Forgot about that. Just bad. So negative 7 plus 5, um, that's negative 2. And so I want to multiply by 4 over 3. That comes away. And so I just get x. See, I'm dividing by a positive number, so I'm safe. I'm very safe, okay? And so this is negative eight over three. And on this side, if I'm solving this, I go three X uh, 
greater than seven plus five. The U for X uh, greater than 12. Again, you wanna do the same thing, just multiply by four over three. Okay, so that X is by itself and you have, uh, or three divides 12, so four times four is 16. So finally, our two answers, so these are our two answers in inequality forms, and we can put it together in um, interval notation, so in interval notation, right, it is, uh, so we have negative infinity comma negative eight over three union. That was a mistake because it's a square. Sixteen infinity. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this class. Do let me know if you have any questions, and the homework problems will be posted. Have a good day.